ninja action, assassin clans. What do you expect with this movie? It's gonna be badass as fuck! What's up guys, Cam here coming at you with another movie review. Today I'm bringing you Ninja Assassin. This movie was directed by James McTeague and stars Korean pop star Rain, Naomi Harris, and Sho Kasuki in a movie about an assassin who's on the run from a ninja clan and he has to fight his way out of all these encounters with them and there's police involved and stuff and I'll be perfectly honest, the only thing that you really care about is the ninja action. That's all you want to see with this movie. They try and bring in all this, you know, espionage and police stuff and, you know, trying to find out more about the clans and, and you don't really care about that as much. It's not executed very well. I'm, I'm, I'll, be perfect, I'll be perfectly honest right now, this movie isn't all that great. What really shines is the action of the movie. Because the stunt work of this movie is incredible. Some of, this, some of the things that these guys pull off is just crazy. How does the plot hold up? Well, the plot is okay. I mean, it's going to have you invested from time to time. There's a lot of flashback sequences that, you know, take up basically the entire first almost three quarter, no, well, almost two thirds of the movie. And some of it will kind of have you invested. I mean, these flashback sequences center around the ninja training of Raizo, played by Rain. And a lot of it is really actually pretty cool to watch. It's interesting to see how the clan works and to see how he's trained and to see the different steps he has to take to get to where he is now. My only problem with these flashback sequences though is there are so many of them. So many of them. And they just and they just pop up continuously. You'll have maybe two, three minutes of the movie itself and then boom, ten minute flashback sequences and then another two minutes of the movie, and then boom, another ten minute flashback sequence. And it, it doesn't really, it, it's not structured very well. And like I said, you don't really care about much of anything except for the ninja stuff itself. But, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, the, there are these two police officers involved, one of which is played by Naomi Harris, and... I mean, she's an okay actress, it's just that particular part of the movie isn't really very important. You could take out the majority of the police crap and still have pretty much the same movie. You have a lady who's trying to find out more about the clan, and because of that, the clan is trying to kill her. You could have taken out the whole rest of the crap and still have the same movie. Another small gripe that I have that I have with this movie is the fact that they use a lot of CGI weapons. I mean, I I can understand the necessity of that because one of the weapons, you know, the the, the chain with a kunai at the end of it. I can understand that you can't really maneuver that around these enclosed areas as well as you'd want to, so you have to kind of CGI that. At the same time, though, it's so noticeable because it, it, because it leaves behind this, you know, like, I guess almost after-image vapor trail whenever he's swinging it around. Same with the swords. I don't like seeing that. It kind of takes you out of the action because you're, you're, you're distracted by the CGI that's kind of blown up in your face. But with that being said, the action is still really good. The sword play. The stunts that these guys do, it is all really cool to watch, and it is bloody. Holy shit, it is bloody. I'm talking like gallons and gallons and gallons of blood are, is spilled in this movie. This movie does a fairly good job of making you care about the main character. At the same time though, I don't like the way that they did it. They try and shoehorn this romance in there that doesn't really feel like it fits in with the movie. Don't get me wrong, it does serve as a fairly solid motivation for the character of Raizo. It does, it does do its purpose to give him a reason to want to break away from this clan. At the same time though, I wish they would have given him a better reason. I wish they would have made it more, honestly, a bit more believable. I'm, because, like, because this romance is just kind of thrown in there and it's kind of pushed in your face. And... It's just another thing they don't really care about with this movie. It's another thing that you have to sit through in order to get to the good stuff. But with all that being said, this, this is a pretty solid action movie. You know, it's not one that you'd want to watch over and over again. You know, just bring a couple of friends over, have a few beers, sit down with some popcorn, pop in the movie, and you'll have a good time with it. Some of the stuff you are going to laugh at because some of the acting is actually pretty, pretty funny. Shokasuki, who plays the leader of the Ozunu clan, you can tell he takes this role very, very seriously. <laughs> like, almost too seriously. It's almost funny at times. But with all things considered, I'm gonna go ahead and give Ninja Assassin a 6.5 out of 10. Well guys, spoiler alert, I'm gonna be going over my top 3 favorite scenes out of Ninja Assassin. I normally do top 5 for a movie of this length, but 
there's not really a lot that goes on with the movie itself because like I said the first two-thirds of this movie is all flashback it's all stuff leading up to the, to the main bulk of the movie that you want to see. So, top three favorite scenes. Starting off with number three, all of Raizo's training. Now this is probably the most interesting aspect of the movie, because it's kind of cool to see how these ninja clans work. It's, kinda, it's cool to see how these children are brought up from little orphans and turned into assassins. You know, from grueling sparring matches to having to creep across a creaky wood floor, and if, they, and if their foot makes a sound on the floor, then the bottom of the foot gets whipped with like, with like a small bamboo stick or something and it causes a big gaping wound in their foot and they have to keep going to push through it. And I think that stuff is pretty interesting, especially the one where Ryazo was forced to live without his eyesight for a year. Because there's a fight sequence that goes along with that and it is actually very, very well done. It's shot very well, the action itself is very good, the stunt work is good, and you see a couple of weapons in there that you don't really see in other movies very much. One, especially where you have the, the handle of a sword, and the blade can slide through the handle and come out both ends. I think that was, I thought that was pretty fucking badass. Number two, the final battle between Raizo and Ozunu. Now this is where the, this is where the story of the, of the movie really comes to a head, because this is the final battle between Raizo and the leader of the clan. And it is pretty well done, actually. The, the choreography of the sword fight is very, very solid and very cool to watch. And there is some really great imagery in there, too. They're fighting in this burning building, and uh, there's one particular sequence where they're fighting behind one of those paper doors, and, uh, and uh, Raizo's getting cut all over his body, and there's blood spattering all over the... All over the all over the, the door, and it's cool to see. It, it's very reminiscent of old Japanese art, and I think it's really fucking cool. <laughs> and then finally, this is actually kind of funny. Whenever Raizo deals the final killing blow to Ozunu, <laughs> you can tell that, th that this guy just has a mouthful of blood that he's just waiting to, that he's just waiting to spit out. Because once the sword goes through his neck, he just kind of goes... I, th I think that's so funny. It's, it's, it's comical in the fact that you know he's just waiting for to, to, to spit it out, and the face that he makes is so... it's not genuine at all. <laughs> Number one, literally every fight between Raizo and any other ninja. Now this is where some really cool ideas get introduced. Like, for example, the idea that ninjas can literally disappear into shadows. Like, they literally become shadows. And they can rise up out of shadows and stuff like that. And it is actually really cool to see that. I've never seen that in a ninja movie before. And like I said before, the stunt work that these guys do is just out of this world. I mean, they're flipping and spinning and kicking and swinging their stuff around. And it's just... Some of it is pretty fucking mind-blowing to see. Especially the scene inside the parking garage where Raizo is fighting off, you know, a couple hundred ninjas and there's one particular long tracking shot where he's just fight, just destroying them all one by one and it's a pretty impressive shot. You can tell that Rain trained for a long time to do a lot of the stunt work in this movie because I cannot find one particular, I, I can't pick out one particular scene where you can tell that it's a stunt double. Well guys, that's it. My review for Ninja Assassin. I really hope that you guys check out this movie. Uh, I mean, I didn't give it a very good grade on the basis of it doesn't have a very good narrative structure, and you don't really care a lot about what happens in the movie aside from anything that has to do with the ninjas themselves. But please, check out this movie. It's a fun time. It really is. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button, and as always, I will see you in my next review.